it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming the fourth page of my bucket list for you guys, going through it with you. So I'm just going to jump straight in because you guys know these can be a little bit lengthy. My first section here is trains. I want to ride every train line in Australia, sleep on an overnight train and ride the top 10 rail rides in the world, which I have Glacier Express, the Royal Scotsman, Trans-Siberian, Eastern and Oriental Express, Cooper Canyon Railway, Venice Simple and Orient Express, Great South Pacific Express, Palace on Wheels, Shinkansen and the Blue Train. Now, going through these. Ride every train line in Australia. I'm Australian, so obviously that's something that's a little bit of an interest to me. And I'm not like a train enthusiast. Like, I don't know about the engines and different kinds of trains and stuff. But as somebody who catches a train a lot, and I actually like the train as a form of transport, personally, it is very interesting to me. Um, so I am going to... Sorry, that was my laptop. I'm just uh, exporting some videos at the same time. So that is something that's very interesting to me and I do. So it's a good way to see the world, in my opinion. Sleep on an overnight train, I just think that would be fun, you know. I want to do like the train, I don't know, um, Paris to Brussels or something like that. Um, as an overnight trip, I just think that would be, it would be fun. And, you know, it's a different way to travel and you also get your accommodation in it as well, so... And then ride the top 10 rail rides in the world. As I said, I do like the train as a form of transport and it is a good way to see the world. And I want to do these top 10 rail rides because of that reason, because of the latter, because it is a good way to see the world. So yeah, moving on, I have books <clears throat> and these are books that I want to read. I want to read every Shakespeare play Entire Harry Potter series, The Twilight Saga, Entire Pretty Little Liars series, Tomorrow When the War Began series, Sherlock Holmes series, 100 Collins Classics books, The Amazon 40 Books to Read Before You Die, and The 50 Shades trilogy. I will just say as a little bit of a disclaimer here, I do like to read, so I do have um, more books, like more series and stuff that I want to add to this that I've been introduced to later in life. Um, but, yeah. So... Long story short, I just want to read them all. I'm a book enthusiast. Now, I have read the entire Harry Potter series. You can see I've got three crosses here. The entire Harry Potter series, the Twilight Saga, and the Fifty Shades trilogy. Um, I've read the first four books of Pretty Little Liars. I haven't read the Tomorrow When the War Begins series. I need to buy it. Um, say with Sherlock Holmes. I've read, I think, 17 of the Collins classics. I need to get this list again, but I want to finish the 100 Collins classics first. I did have a list of this attached to, like, and I kept it with my bucket list. I don't know where it's gone, though. Um, so I need to just get that again. And Shakespeare play, I think I read five or six of them while I was at No, I read more than that. While I was at school, I think I read maybe eight Shakespeare plays think not 100% sure but I've, I've read you know as a fair chunk already through school and I want to continue that but what I'm actually if you want to if you want a video on my books and how I want to how I'm going about reading them as per this and what I always have on, in my library at all times let me know leave me a comment down below and I can do like a books video um, but yeah they're all things I'm interested in so yeah Next one down, I have movies and television. <clears throat> These are movies that I want to see and TV series that I want to watch and, you know, things like that. So, every movie that has won an Academy Award. And when I wrote this list, I was like, oh yeah, Academy Award. Kind of left it at that. But I think I want to do, like, is there like a best movie or, you know, the movie of the year or something like that. I think that's through the Academy Awards. I don't even know if Academy Awards and movies now, I can't remember, but whatever, like the, the movie of the year type thing since this exception. It's Golden Globes maybe, is it? I don't know. 100 Funniest Movies. That list I think is also through Amazon, but I'm not 100% sure. The 10 Greatest Movies of All Time. These were all made prior to 2000, I think. Um, and I do understand... I do understand that like some of these things will change same as like the 40 books to read before you die like I do understand that some of these things will change but um you know say if I look at it every 10 years and see what's changed and then just read those as well 
or watch those movies as well, I should say. Every movie that Steven Spielberg has produced, he's a producer, right? Director, whatever. Um, I've, I've seen like five or six of his movies, I think. Every James Bond movie, I've seen, I think, maybe ten of them. Every Star Wars movie, I've done that. All the Harry Potter movies, I've done that. I've also done it as a marathon from start to finish consistently. I wanted to die by the end of it, but it was well worth it. <laughs> every movie that Dakota Fanning has played a role in, every movie that Heath Ledger has played a role in, every movie made by Disney, every episode of The Simpsons, every episode of Full House, every episode of The Cosby Show, and every episode of McLeod's Daughters. The bottom three I have done as well. The Simpsons, I would maybe only be a season or two off, to be perfectly honest, and there's like, what, 30 seasons? Um, but yeah, these are all things, again, that I'm interested in. I'm not like a huge movie TV person, like, for God's sake, I don't even know if Steven Spielberg's producer or director, don't know if it's called the Academy Awards, whatever, but I do like to watch movies and I do like to appreciate movies, but you will notice that a lot of them are specific to people. So like Steven Spielberg, Dakota Fanning, Heath Ledger, Disney, um, these ones are series, you know, like a lot of them are very specific. So yeah. The last one on this page is people, and these are people that I want to meet. So I have Bethany Hamilton, Safari, Sophie D'Alessio, J.C. Lee Dugard, Lauren Huxley, Eden Wood, The Irwin Family, Lindy Chamberlain, and J.K. Rowling. Each of these I will go with through with you guys. So Bethany Hamilton, um, she is the shark attack survivor. She had her arm torn off Halloween 2003. Her story was published in a Dolly magazine in 2004. For those of you who don't know what Dolly is, it's just a magazine that was like popular with teenage girls when I was a teenage girl. Um, but she, her story was published in that, I think maybe four or five months after the accident. I want to say around that time. Or it may have even been, it may have been like a one year anniversary thing now, now that I think about it. I don't remember. It was a good, you know. 12 years ago, so 11 years ago. Um, no, it's longer than that. At any rate, it was 2003, 2004, it was published in that magazine. Um, and I have, I fell in love with her in that, in that article, in that, um, in that interview and stuff, and I haven't gone back. She's one of my favourite people in the entire world. She is such an inspiration. She's such a beautiful person. She's very um, talented. She's very skilled. She's very, um, like, she's just a naturally beautiful person. She's friendly. She's kind hearted. She's so positive after everything that's happened to her. And she's so, so, so inspirational and so motivating. And I love her. Um, Safari, he is a young boy who was, oh, I can't even remember his story now. Oh, that's so bad because he's on my list, but he's, he's a young boy. He was either fostered or adopted by an, an older couple here in Australia after there was a, a fire in his village in Africa or there was a, a raid and he was attacked or something. I want to say it's a fire because I feel like he was a burn victim. Ah, oh, I feel awful for not even being able to remember now. But this, like, as I said, as I've said several times, this list was written when I was much, much younger, about 15 years ago. Um, and his story was very prevalent to me at that time. Oh, that's really going to annoy me now. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna look it up after this, but any at any rate, he was he is such a a very lucky little boy to have had people here who who looked after him and cared for him. Like the, this couple paid for all his medical expenses and you know looked after him. He was I I think he was fostered. He's one of the reasons I I want to say he was fostered because I feel like that was also around the same time that I decided I wanted to be a foster parent. Um. Oh, this is really going to annoy me that I don't remember, but and I'm so sorry for not being able to remember. But anyway, 
Um, yeah, so I, I, I want to meet him because he's such a beautiful, inspirational and fun-loving little boy. I remember seeing videos, like clips of him on TV in hospital and stuff and he was just so fun. And I just, I, he's just always held a very special place in my heart and I've never ever forgotten seeing that on the news every night. Sophie D'Alessio, she was one of the young girls who was um, injured in the um, incident at the daycare centre when the car went through the, um, drove through the fence and two two girls were were burnt from it. Sophie D'Alessio was one of them. At the time, she I found her very very beautiful and very inspirational. I have her book as well, I believe somewhere at the time I'm filming this I have her book by the time you see this I will have done my book purge and I don't know if I'm going to keep it um but I did find her very inspirational for a long time since then I've actually met a few people who have met her and have worked with her in hospitals and things like that and apparently she was a very nasty very ratty, very spoilt girl while she was in hospital and I do understand that hospitals aren't positive places or things like that but one of these people that I know worked with her in a physiotherapy or something of that nature and she was much the same. Her parents were much the same, um, family, friends, etc. They're all, they're all very much the same as her had that kind of um, sense of entitlement and um, sense of like I'm better than you type um, view which is not sorry about that it's my laptop again uh, which is not not positive and it does sort of deter me from wanting to meet her however because she was somebody that I did think highly of for a long time I have kept her on the list JC Lee Dugard is next if you're not familiar with JC Lee Dugard Educate yourself, girl, because she's um she's an amazing person in my opinion. She was held captive for 18 years, bore two children to her captor, and um, eventually managed to escape. Oh, she was eventually found, sorry, by an officer who recognised that the person she had been seen in public with was um, not allowed to have children, and her children were with him, and you know things like that. She was found. It was very very elaborate. That's a long story very very um condensed i have her book as well and that's one that i will be keeping because i think she's absolutely fantastic and um i highly recommend that you you read her book and i would love to to ever get the chance to meet her lauren huxley um she was dousing gasoline and left in the garage uh, and i think it was her boyfriend set it alight while she was still inside she she was a survivor of that type of um, incident. I'm starting to see a theme here. Safari, Sophie Telezio, Lauren Huxley, all burn victims. This is not good. Um, but she she's just, she was a very, very beautiful person. Her face got burned. She, she was sort of ruined for life, basically. But she's so, she's so positive and, and stuff. And I'd, I'd love to just sort of meet her and pick her brain about things as well. Eden Wood, she is a pageant girl, if you're not familiar with her. Um... I just think she's fun, to be perfectly honest. I just think she's a fun person and I'd love to meet her. The Irwin family. Originally, this was Steve Irwin. When he passed away, I um, continued to follow the Irwin family. And now Bindi Irwin is one of my favourite people on the planet. And I would love to meet the entire family. Um, if I ever get the chance, it would just be a, a dream come true. Because Steve Irwin, I'm not an animal person by any means, but my brother was. So we, I grew up... Um, watching watching Steve Irwin on TV and being very familiar with him and stuff, and he was I always I did find him fascinating and like anything to do with animals that he was sort of a part of, I did I really enjoyed. So yeah, I'd love to meet his family. Lindy Chamberlain, she is the woman who's um, she's like the the dingo at my baby. Um, her baby was taken Azaria Chamberlain. She was taken by a dingo while camping and um, nobody believed her and everyone said that she'd killed her baby and things like that. She actually lives very local to where I grew up and I would love to meet her and pick her brain from a psychological standpoint to see what all of this stuff has done to her. 
Um, I just find, I think that would be really interesting. And then finally, JK Rowling. Obviously, I'm a Harry Potter nerd. I'm a Harry Potter fan. Like, Harry Potter is my life. It's gotten me through so much. If it wasn't for that series, I don't, I tip. It's so cliche, but I don't know where I would be. And I just want to meet her. And I, I just want to be able to thank her in person. And for all the things that she does for, for people. And just to sort of reiterate how much I appreciate um, the book series. So anyway, that is page four of my bucket list. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below anything that's on your bucket list related to these categories. I would love to know. So if you care to share, please do. Also go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.